consulting is a part of my business that is starting to grow and it's becoming um, not a nuisance part of the job, but it's a, it's a necessary part of the job because of where I live. Uh, in California, especially in the larger cities, there are a lot of ordinances that protect trees, and rightfully so. Um, sometimes people think that the cities go overboard and they become a little bit too controlling, and sometimes I think that too, but um, in the same token, there's a lot of developers, a lot of people that will cut down an absolutely beautiful tree that benefits the entire neighborhood. And what people don't see is <laughs> the old saying, I can't see the forest for the trees, means the same thing in the city too, especially when you live in a uh, relatively well forested and well um, wooded urban environment because we have wildlife, we have shade needs, we have a lot of other issues. But then on the other side of the spectrum, we've got people that, that need solar panels. You know, they want uh, uh, lots of sun. We've got gardeners that are upset because their neighbor's trees cast shadows into their backyards. You know, the biggest part of the problem is that the yards are so small. You know, these tiny little lots and everybody wants their own little bit of happiness in their own little world. So that's where I come in. This uh, next consultation um, is a very simple one. It's the people want to add on to their house. And there's a beautiful tree in the front yard. So the city starts the process off by asking for an arborist report. And what we've got here is a copper beach. And the client is going to be doing an addition to this house and this tree will have to be removed. And it's kind of a shame because it's a beautiful tree. The trunk on this, this tree measures at uh, 20, 21 inches and the height of the tree is uh, 42 feet. Um, its location is eight feet from the foundation and the health of the tree, it's uh, dormant right now, but it has a lot of buds developing. I can see a little bit of deadwood up there, but I really can't find any defects. The tree has never been topped. Uh, it's never been trimmed improperly. Uh, for all intents and purposes, this is a gorgeous tree. Look at that, it's just beautiful. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a real crying shame that they're going to take this tree out. In this case, the arborist report identifies the tree. It gives the measurements and the height of the tree, the size measured at four and a half feet. They call it DBH, diameter at breast height. And that's a, a fairly common term in our industry. And then I have to evaluate the health of the tree. And in this case, the, I couldn't find anything wrong with it. A few dead branches, but the tree has never been topped. There's never been any problems. So all I can really do is start the process by giving the, the client a report that they provide to the city, which then goes to planning. And then the, uh, the next step is they either stamp it okay that they can remove the tree for their new construction, but they will usually impose a requirement to plant new trees. So the key word is canopy. We want to preserve canopy. The city wants to preserve our canopy. Um, there's a lot of positives to having a, a good tree area, a fully um, established canopy. And we recognize the value in our city um, because of the trees. There's a huge part of the value is associated with the, the wooded feel of the area. So I'll show you what uh, is involved in a real basic arborist consultation on a beginning project. So this is for a copper beach. Now a more common type of report is going to be a tree protection report. That's where a property has established trees that have to be preserved, uh, oftentimes heritage trees like these big oaks in the background here. And the new construction has to be built in a manner that protects the roots as well as um, 
not compromise the integrity of the tree. So everything from trenching to foundations to where the utilities are going to go, all that has to be taken into consideration. This report is not going to be that complex, but the other end of the arborist reporting becomes much, much more involved. Sometimes I have to do follow-up reporting uh, throughout the, the whole project. So it's a, it, it's a good, uh, good way to make a living. It's interesting. It's, it's interesting to follow up, but it's also frustrating because I have to deal with contractors that just don't care. You know, they'll go anywhere they want to do. They'll do it or they'll put up tree protective fencing around the root system only to take it down to do their work then put the fencing back up and pretend that they, everything is okay. So it's, a, it's, a, it's an interesting uh, series of reports that I've got to generate sometimes. And then finally I've got the client that buys a new property and they want to know if the trees that they're buying are healthy or safe. Uh, a lot of realtors will have me come in and I'll do a report based upon um, all the potential hazards. I, I've got to generate a report for the new client because they want to know what they're getting themselves into in terms of what it's going to cost to maintain the trees, if the trees are going to uh, die and that's going to be an added expense. But more often it's about hazards. Everyone worries about these big trees, especially if they're near the house or over the house. And where I live, there are a lot of really, really big trees, a lot of big oak trees, a lot of um, significant heritage trees that have suffered for decades and decades of improper pruning, topping, or, or huge cuts that lead to long-term decay, underground utilities, all kinds of potential problems. And those are the more complicated reports because um, I can't see underground, so a lot of times I have to guess at what may have happened. Uh, I look at locations of utilities and try to guess where trenching was done. Um, you know, I, I've got to be honest and accurate in what I write in my reports, but it's important that I don't miss anything too. So it's, I'm in my office, so I'm going to write this little report. Okay, so here's the report. It's a very short report for a simple report. Basically, I am talking about the tree. A site inspection was performed today at the above address to identify and evaluate the health of one front yard, Copper Beach. And then I have to add what the client wants to do. The client wishes to add to, on to their house, and unfortunately, this tree was planted too close to the structure. The area of construction will impact the tree, and if this construction is to take place, this tree would need to be removed. Uh, respectfully, Blair Glenn ISA certified arborist with my Arbor certification number. So as I said, that's a very simple report. It's a basic report. And the purpose of the report is to start the process. The city has to evaluate the tree and they have to determine whether or not the tree is A, a heritage tree, B, a native species that is important. And three, if the area is um, lacking in trees. So what they'll probably do is they will probably allow them to take the tree down. They'll have to pay for a permit and then they will require that the client replant one or two other trees that have um, a comparable amount of uh, canopy size. So it'll be um, it'll be like a 15 gallon, maybe a 24 inch or four, 24 gallon tree that will achieve a comparable size. They're not expecting them to plant a huge expensive tree, but they just want to ensure that the future of the area uh, remains consistent. So that's part of what I do. Um, that's not much fun, but you know, I just wanted to share that with you. If you're interested in becoming an arborist and want to know a little bit more about uh, what the job involves, this is just one aspect. It's not all about trimming trees and removing trees and actually touching trees. Sometimes it's sitting in the office and typing. Yeah.